Is it visible to everyone? This presentation, first slide. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, as you people know a little more or less about coal. So, coal is basically a fossil fuel, which is used in power plant for power generation purposes. Basically, coal is being burned inside a boiler to get the heat utilized for water vapor production purposes and thus the water vapor in turns used to rotate turbo generator and thus it produce electricity electricity okay so basically in our country the total installed generated power is 360 gigawatt as per fiscal year 2019-20 statistics and out of which 195 gigawatt is shared by coal based power generation so normally it imparts about 54 percent of the total electricity generation in our country nearly 60 percent coal whatever we procure from the mines is from indian railways rec systems and 25 percent whatever the coal we procured okay and 25 percent whatever the coal we procured through truck systems and balance are for merry-go-round systems merry-go-round systems is not ever adopted at jindal power limited it is basically a dedicated freight corridor systems what usually adopted by ntpc and near about adani power generation at gujarat they have their own rakes and wagon systems and dedicated corridor systems by means of which they procure coals directly from the mines and those rakes and wagons are only dedicated to procure coal only for those organizations these are called merry go down systems so in at jindal power we used to procure 65 basically at Nowadays, we used to procure 80% coal from trucks and rest 20% coals from rake mode systems by Indian Railways. So yeah. afterwards, the organic matrix of coal, it is primarily consisted of organic particles and inorganic particles. The organic particles is the combustible particles. It is desirable and inorganic particles is non-desirable properties of the coals. The, basically, the coal quality depends on the origin from which mines, which sources we procure this coal. Mechanisms of formation. There's a two types of mechanism of formation. That is drift theory and in-situ theory. Afterwards, I will brief about it. Mechanism of formation of coal. And thirdly is the mining process. By which process? we extract the coal from the mines. Is it open cast mine or is it underground mining process? In open cast mining process, there is a tendency of uh, mixing of foreign particles, non-desirable particles within the coal. And in underground mining systems, which is very few in our countries, it is little bit prevented. Next slide, please. Next slide. So it is the basic definition of coal. It is a fossil fuel, what I have already told you. It is a formation of coal, basically, as we know that due to in earthquake process or in any type of natural calam process of natural calamity, when trees and plants are getting trapped inside the inside the ground at very depth level, then after days after days after time in geological process, pressure times, it converts into the fossil fuels. So basically mainly coal is composed of primarily carbon along with ash, moisture, volatile matter and variable quantities of other element such as sulfur, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and other different different types of minerals, which use which we usually have in Indian subcontinents. Next, 
this is a outline of qualification process what i have already, already told you living plants afterwards when these plants getting trapped inside the ground at depth high depth level it becomes a dead organic matter and after days years decades and more centuries after it getting biologically oh, no, no. and chemically degraded of organic materials into peat formation any question somebody is asking some questions no no somebody is asking some questions if they have any question they can also also text it okay na okay so days years decades after this coals is uh, this sorry this living plants is getting transformed biologically and chemically into organic material into a pit formation and after that for me no me are don't talk inside stop the mic and after very long years this peat it getting transferred into coal due to application of further heating and pressures inside the grounds next slide please sir ye peat formation matlab kya hota hai sir peat bhi ek coal hota hai ponda bhi coal peat is also a initial phase of coal but it is not to be termed as a coal peat is also an initial phase of coal but what usually we used to burn at power plants it's bituminous coal it's not peat okay okay peat is a very okay. soft peat is a very soft but coal is get little bit hard in comparison to the peat okay okay sir and what i have already told you there is a two types of formation of coal what is drift theory and secondary is in situ theory drift theory is basically observable in indian subcontinents whereas trees and plants is getting out or getting flowed off by floods by rivers passages and they are getting trapped into the ground in any lakes and afterwards it is getting transformed into the coal this is called drift theory that means the trees and plants whatever they have positions positioned and they are transformed into the coal into the some another position they are getting conveyed or getting carried at different positions to make coal formation in drift process coal formation there is a possibility of plenty of undesirable properties such, such as mud ash minerals materials other other properties so in whatever the coal we found in indian subcontinents is little bit of lower quality but in case of abroad you can say at australia indonesia us their coal is getting formed in by process of massive earthquakes where the trees and plants is getting situated and they are getting drowned inside the inside into the ground at the very own position and in situ cases the level of coal whatever the formation periods they are facing is taken place at the very in depth of the ground but in case of drip theory very usually whatever we will uh, excavate 10 to 15 meters of ground level we can get coal but it in case of in situ coals we have to excavate near about 40 to 50 meters after all afterwards we will get the coal okay any question this is the little bit classification of coals you can see the peat is the lowest grade of coal having the highest percentage of moisture 
and lowest percentage of carbon. Afterwards, lignite, subbituminous, bituminous, and anthracite. In Indian subcontinent, mainly we get subbituminous and bituminous grade of coal. Lignite and peat is not at all desirable for power plant electricity generation. And little bit of anthracite we used to procure at past from Australia, Indonesia, and USA having very high grade of carbon and high heating value. But nowadays we are completely dependent on subbituminous and bituminous coal, whatever available in nearby regions of our power plant. Somebody is asking some questions, please. My dear students, if you have any question, you can easily text it, okay? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Utilization of, utilization wise, there's a two classification of coal. What is cooking coal? Where coal is getting burned in absence of oxygen and we use the complete carbon contents of the coal in case of cooking phase, this type of coal is used mainly in steel plants for carbon pickup process of steel melting session. Okay. Cooking coal is basically used in steel plants for carbon pickup process in steel melting process. And in case of electricity generation, we use thermal coal basically termed as non-cooking coal for electricity generation. Next slide, please. Is a little bit of pyramidal, pyramid structure of coal, lignite, subbituminous, bituminous, and anthracite. The bituminous and subbituminous we use in power plant generation. And basically in steel plant, they use bituminous coal for making cooking coal generation. Okay, next. This is the classification of coal. You can say pit, lignite, subbituminous, bituminous, and farthest is the anthracite. Day after day, year after year, when in case of geological process, the pressure, heat, and time, these three factors are the main for coal making process in natural cases. Next please. This is the pit. This is the first stage of transformation what I have termed already to you. It has a composition of 40 to 55 percent of carbon and it basically consists of very very impurities. Sufficient volatile matter, lot of moisture, more smoke, more pollution. If we burn this type of peat in electricity generation, in case of boiler, there is a chances of heat down process, load shutdown process. So it is not used in electricity generation in power plants. Lignite. This is the intermediate stage of coal formation process. It is also has 40 to 55% of fixed carbon. Mainly in nature, it is visible as dark to black brown. Moisture quantity is also high, about 35%, which is also not suitable for power plant electricity generation. And it basically creates accidents in mines as it undergoes spontaneous combustions when it comes to direct contact with moisture and oxygen. Bituminous coal. These are the level of coal what we usually use to procure from our nearby mines. In case of bituminous coals, there is a percentage contribution of 40 to 80 percent of carbon. Moisture and volatile content is 50 to 40 percent. Basically, it structured as a dense, compact, and it is usually of black color invisible. It is 
less of vegetable material, mineral material is not very high, but usually it is suitable for electricity generation. It is mainly used in production of poor gas and also in case of electricity generation, we can use it. Next, anthracite. Anthracite is the farthest and highest grade of coal. It is very, very rare in case of India. In Jammu and Kashmir and in Northeastern region, there is a little bit trace of this type of coal. And basically it is the product and production of coal from in situ process. It has 80 to 95% of carbon, very little volatile material. It is highly, highly efficient for heat generation. It has the best quality of coal commercially available at US, Australia, and little bit in China and Russia. But in Indian continent, Indian subcontinent, it is not getting procured or excavated from the mines. Anthracite is not available in India. It has been traced in Jammu and Kashmir and Northeastern region, but till now it is not excavated. Next. Basically, in bookish knowledge, what we used to termed Used for the term as a coal classification, basically we know that anthracite, lignite, peat, anthracite in such category. But in case of commercial purpose, the gradation of coal is completely dependent on its calorific value. The gross calorific value is determined for all of the commercial purposes, all of the commercial transactions in case of coal procurement. Next, this is the CIL, Coal India Limited provided 17 grades available in India. And basically we used to procure nowadays G13, G14, G15 band of coal in maximum quantity. As our JPL's boiler design is 3000 to 4000 kilocalorie per kg to handle in GCB in such range of coal. So that's why we used to procure G13, 14 and 15 grade of coal in nowadays. So basically in Indian subcontinent, you can available G5 to G, sorry, previous slide, previous slide, please. Previous slide, previous slide, please. Yes, gradation sign. Basically in Indian subcontinent, you get G5 to G17 grade of coal. G1 to G4 grade of coal is provided by CIL, but not at all available. G5 to G17 grade of coal is available and vastly available is G12, G11 to G17 grade of coal. This eight grade of coal is majority in available in local, local nearby mines, what we used to procure. Next. These are the coal quality parameters what we usually used to. This is the main coal quality parameters what used to determine for commercial transaction process. Moisture, basically we get around 8% to 15% as total moisture. Equilibrated moisture as 4% to 8%. Ash content in 40 to 50% range, VM 20 to 25%. Fixed carbon as termed as FC, 25 to 35%. This is the main proximate analysis parameters of course what we used to determine at JPL. Ultimate analysis is nowadays is very much rare. Very often we used to make ultimate analysis of our coal for purpose of annual gradation or any type of uh, boiler efficiency germination process. But on regular basis, we only used to determine these four parameters of coal.
so basically coal quality what we termed is based on total moisture inherent moisture surface moisture and equilibrated moisture one by one i will tell you inherent moisture is the molecular moisture which present in coal it is neither be extracted or not be evaluated by means of simple process to determine this inherent moisture you have to burn sorry you have to heat the coal at the rate of 108 plus minus 2 degree centigrade as per is 1350 process in case of equilibrated moisture it is mainly used to determine moisture in indian subcontinent tropical region process where uniform percentage in 60% relative humidity and 40 degree centigrade equilibrated moisture is mainly deals with coal gradation process and in case of inherent moisture if we used to procure imported coal then it is being considered but in case of indian coal equilibrated moisture is being considered and surface moisture is the moisture which is getting added to the coal surface by means of it is excavation process by means of it is transportation process by means of it is handling process and the summation of im inherent moisture and surface moisture is termed as total moisture okay so you can say that total moisture is critically affected by surface moisture as the surface moisture is not controlled by any parameters yes no 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 ha huh. as total moisture is critically affected by surface moisture because whatever the coal computation of gradation we used to determine is completely based on the moisture percentage substitution percentage substitution process what i will show you and surface moisture is basically it is controllable if we use usefully and carefully handle this material i mean the coal during its transportation process excavation process storage process surface moisture is primarily getting affected by drains another addition of moistures and etc etc next these are the this term fuel ratio is main we used to determine for making a coal selection process fuel ratio it is the ratio of fixed carbon and volatile material 1.5 max is desirable in case of non cooking coal that means fc by vm should be less than equal to 1.5 then this coal is suitable for electricity generation and for purpose of procurement at power plant if this ratio is getting higher then it will not useful because it will resulted in heat shut down process load shut down process okay and ash chemical analysis and ash fusion temperatures it is basically getting uh, determined to the flow, the handle 
the maneuverability of coal, the handling systems, whether how much ash percentage is consisted inside a coal so that it can cause deposits to make the coal bit slaggy type and bit, bit adhesive type that it can cause jam inside the bunkers, inside the coal mill, inside the coal handling systems. These are the technical terms what we used to follow in computation of boiler efficiency, moisture in coal. Mainly it has been derived after years of experiments by our CHP units, coal handling plants units. More or less it is based on empirical calculation, you can say, and every 1% increase in moisture decrease the boiler efficiency 0.1 to 0.2 percent thus and thus for hydrogen thus and thus for coal gcb thus and thus for ash content okay so these are the main slides what i used to showcase you if you have any question please go forward Please show me the, the previous Some one, which is, hello? Just show me the last slide. Last slide, please show him the last slide. Is it visible? Yes, sir, visible. Hello, sir. Yes, please. Uh, how, how can we determine gross calorific value and what is the difference between volatile matter and carbon carbon percentage? Calorific value. First of all, you have to, you should know what is the calorific value. Calorific value is the amount of heat liberated when unit amount of fuel is being burned in presence of oxygen. Okay. So basically the calorific value is determined. Hello, let me, let me finish, let me finish. When an unit quantity of fuel is being burned in presence of oxygen, then the heat liberated, that unit amount of fuel is termed as calorific value of that fuel. Okay. In case of coal, it is termed as gross calorific value. and it is being determined by bomb calorimeter. There is a certain process of calorific value determination and it is depicted in IS1350. Okay. And in case of volatile material, mainly it is being present inside the coal for as it is acted as a catalyst for ignition purpose. And carbon is the fuel which burnt to liberate the heat. And volatile material is helped to make the carbon being ignited. Okay. Is there any more question? Okay. Now, I would like to show them one calculation. If you can put this camera towards the whiteboard, okay? It is already, okay.
Is it visible? <coughs> Actually, <coughs> from is it visible? No. Actually, from bomb calorimeter, what we used to determine the air dried basis, the GCV. There are three types of GCV. Some question. Yes. I will type that message. Should I type that message? Both light okay. so, Inherent moisture is the internal molecular moisture what present in coal. Okay. And surface moisture, what getting imparted on the surface of the coal. Inherent moisture cannot be controlled. It cannot be added, cannot be subtracted in natural process. But in case of surface moisture, whatever the moisture is getting added due to coal handling process, coal excavation process, coal storage process by means of rains, by means of external moisture addition is getting covered over the surface of the coal is called the surface moisture. And the total summation of inherent moisture percentage and surface moisture percentage is termed as total moisture percentage. Okay. How much time taken for coal formation? Year to year, decades. You can even term it as a century. Whatever the coal is excavated right now, it is getting trapped at Tyrannosaurus period, at Jurassic period. Okay. Hundred of hundred, two hundred, thousand of thousand years it is taken for natural coal formation process. Any more question? Or otherwise I will go to whiteboard again. Any more question? So should I go to the whiteboard? Okay. Tell him welcome. <laughs> So there are basically three parameters of GCV. GCV is termed as gross calorific value. There are three methods of GCV computation. One is ADB basis. Second is equilibrated basis. And third is ARV basis. ADV basis. The full form of ADV ADB basis is air dried basis. Second is equilibrated basis. It is mainly commercially termed as 60 40 basis. Properly not visible. Okay. Now it is visible. Basis and third is ARB basis.
ARV is as received basis. Have they noted down? Just tell them, have they noted down? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So basically, first of all, I will come to ADV basis. By means of bond calorimeter, when we used to determine the gross calorific value of coal, the bond calorimeter will give me the ADB basis result, the air dried basis result. Okay. And this is, so I can again say ADB basis, it is result given by the result given by bomb calorimeter okay afterwards that two part equilibrated basis and as received as received basis is being computed on percentage substitution okay so whatever the result we get from bomb calorimeter is the adb basis gcb except indian china sorry india bangladesh and pakistan all over the base all over the world except India, Pakistan and Bangladesh and mostly in Sri Lanka. Except these four countries all over the world, all over the world, ADB basis result is being considered for commercial transaction process. When we used to procure the imported coal, ADB basis result is being considered for commercial transaction process. Okay. And the moisture percentage, what we used to determine usually is IM percentage EM percentage and TM percentage. Okay. In case of IM percentage, there is a process of getting also of hitting the coal at the rate of 108 plus minus 2 degree centigrade. As per IS 1350, we used to determine this IM percentage. IM is inherent moisture. It is being determined by heating the coal at the rate of 108 plus minus 2 degree centigrade. Okay. And directly related with ADB basis moisture. Okay. Next is EM percentage. EM is termed as equilibrated moisture. In Indian tropical region, equilibrated moisture is being considered for all kind of commercial transaction process. Equilibrated percentage, equilibrated moisture percentage, and equilibrated GCV. Okay. So EM for EM determination, we used to determine the EM percentage by means of a specially designed chamber, inside which 60% relative humidity and 40 degree centigrade temperature is being maintained.
So as per IS one three five zero, we used to equilibrated moisture percentage by heating the coal. Sorry, by keeping the coal coal sample inside a chamber where sixty percent relative relative humidity and forty degree centigrade uh, temperature is being maintained. And this process usually usually takes seventy two hours to complete. Okay. So now we got ADB basis most ADB basis GCV. We got inherent moisture percentage, and now equilibrated moisture percentage. Okay. Now there is a process of percentage substitution. What we usually adopt to determine the equilibrated moisture GCV for the purpose of gradation of coal. Okay. Now there is a formula. Please note this formula. No break, and after completion of everything, I will take a break. Not a small break. I will take a long break because already board meeting is ongoing, and I have to come here by submission of all of the documents, all of the requirements to. My senior bosses. I don't know whether they will call me. My phone will ring, and I have to rush there. I don't know. They have noted this formula. Yes, sir. Okay. So it is now clear. How we used to determine the equilibrated basis GCV for transaction process of Indian coal, and over this equilibrated basis GCV, coal gradation is taken place by Coal India Limited. This GCV, sorry, is considered. By CIL, I hope everybody knows CIL, Coal India Limited, for coal gradation purpose. What you have seen in the slide, okay, G1 to G17 grades, that all are on the basis of equilibrated GCV. G1 to G17, okay. All are basis of equilibrated basis GCV. Later on, I will share the coal gradation and its pricing in Indian currency. What is usually provided by Coal India Limited. After end of this class, I will share it to you. Okay. So in Indian. Domestic coal equilibrated GCV and EM percentage is being considered for all commercial purpose. Okay, should I remove this? Now ask them whatever they have removed. Uh, note it down or not? 
have you noted down yes sir yes sir okay. and third is tm percentage usually we used to determine tm percentage as total mortar percentage in power plant as in case of power plant whatever the coal realization and transaction process we used to follow with our coal transporter with our coal supplier is completely based on tm percentage and as received gcb basis percentage it is also determined by is1350 in case of total moisture percentage we used to follow two process first is coal drying in natural environment and afterwards followed by im percentage evaluation process okay this is being evaluated on daily basis by our power plant lab and this report is being shared to all of our supplier coal vendor coal transporter for their transaction for their commercial purpose and basically it is the same rules so these are the main parameters what we usually adopted at power plant for coal procurement and coal supply process and for coal quality determination process there is also a process of coal blending usually we used to procure coal from 6 to 7 sources and afterwards it is getting blended to get desirable output heat output inside the boiler in case of blending purpose we usually used to follow the fuel ratio percentage the fuel ratio is fc by vm and it should be less than equal to 1.5 this is termed as fuel ratio whenever we used to blending different sources of coal we have to keep in mind then afterwards the weighted average fixed carbon percentage and the weighted average volatile material percentage and the ratio of two will be within 1.5 if 
it is getting higher then there is a tendency of overheating part overheating issues inside a boiler and if it is getting lower also below 1 just a minute basically um, this is not visible okay now it is visible so it is the ideal condition of coal blending whenever you used to blend different sources of coal we have to keep the fuel ratio in this range 1 to 1.5 okay yes sir now just 5 to 10 minutes i will take another time i want to show some key factors what we usually follow for selecting our mines sources in case of coal procurement okay it is visible yes sir first factor is distance it is the prime factor distance whenever used to procure we used to procure coal we have to consider the time factor and this time factor is complete directly related to distance what is the distance between our power plant and mines this is the prime factor second past history of that mine what quality of coal we got in past from that mines whatever their capability of that mine to provide uniform quality of coal so here the sub factors are there coal quality sir white board ki picture saaf nahi dikh rahi hai यस वाइट बोर्ड की पिक्चर साफ नहीं दिख रही है ब्लड दिख रहा है यस सर ब्लड एक मिनट अनुपम
अब ठीक है यस सर in case this history is not available in a certain power plant then we can take the help of knowledge of another power plant who have already procured coal from these mines or any certain mines what they got the quality or the highest and lowest quality of coal from that specific mines and the uniformity of receiving coal of that certain quality from that mine three coal production capacity of that mine it is usually completely commercial purpose coal production capacity how much quantity of coal that mine can produce in a certain pe period of year the highest coal producing capacity what we use to procure coal is gebra gebra open cast pit it is the largest open cast pit in asia continent and it has the highest production capacity of 45 million tons per annum okay and it is situated at korba area southeastern coal field limited four coal seam sections of that mine how many coal seam available in that mine specifically it is the terminology what mine people usually adopt the seam sections seam means the layer of coal available in that mine whenever coal is getting formed in geological process it is getting formed in layer by layer as much depth as you go under the ground you will get better quality of layer you will get better quality of coal because as much under depth you will proceed you will get the higher pressure and temperature that will help to form better quality of coal so how much coal seam sections available in that mine and what are their grade and what are their production capacity from that coal seam sections and there is an another factors which related to commercial purpose freights charges road condition
and other aspects in terms of mines management, everything. Okay. Last line is not visible. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Hello. Yes. Video is getting off. There is complaining. Anupam sir, I can't hear your voice. Sir, आप से बात करना था Anupam sir से. Anupam जी आप से बात करना चाहते हैं बोलिए. Sir, वो मेरा थोड़ा sir payment में दिक्कत हो रहा है sir. Hello, sir. Sunai Dera. At first, attend the class. Afterwards, or later on, we will discuss about it. Okay? Okay, sir. Class is going on now. Okay. After this class, we will please short it out. Okay, no matter. So, I think it is the brief insight what I have provided it to you regarding coal qualities and its parameters and its determination and its implications in commercial transaction process, commercial business process. So if you have any questions, furthermore, I will share this PPT and some relevant topics and notes regarding coal parameters, coal quality with you. And if you have any question regarding this, please ask me or text me. Sir, how coal sampling is done? Coal sampling. Coal sampling is not the part of today's topic. However, as you ask me this question, I will answer it. Coal sampling. IS 436. It is the Indian standards. What all organizations throughout the India follow this standard for coal sampling purpose. Okay. Basically, as per these standards, whatever the coal is coming through road mode and rail mode. First of all, road mode, we are sub getting this coal from truck and in roll mode, we are getting this coal from wagon. And there is an, another system, conveyor mode. by means of conveyor belt. In case of trucks and wagons, we first select the day's total truck, total truck numbers, 
afterwards we will divide it to in sub lots and from each sub lot 25% trucks is considered to collect the coal sample from truck in case of wagon there are usually 59 wagons in one rack in indian railways so in case of 59 wagons we usually divide it into several sub lots as per is 436 if you go through that standard you will easily find it so after divided it in the several sub lots we used to select 20% 25% in case of it will become wagon from each sub lot for to collect the coal sample from that wagon afterwards collection of all coal it is mixed to make a heap so it is a heap of coal afterwards it is being quartered in such a way suppose we have collected coal sample and make it stacked in a circular geometry and afterward after division this part or this part getting rejected or you can say this part or this part getting rejected if this two part is getting rejected this two parts is again mixed to get again a geometry like circle and afterwards it is again quartered it is a process of quartering coning reduction process it is being done until we get 5 kg of sample and during this process we used to handle the coal sample by means of several jaw crusher which reduce the size of coal okay usually what we got from road mode rail mode and in conveyor belt mode we got minus 100 mm or minus 250 mm size of coal minus 100 mm means less than equal to 100 mm sorry less than equal to 100 mm and less than equal to 250 mm these sizes are available in domestic coal and in case of imported coal always you will get 100 mm sized coal in domestic coal two variants are there so during this quartering coning reduction process first of all these coals are being passed by jaw crusher which provide us a quantity sorry which provides us the quality of minus 12.5 mm this 12.5 mm is taken away of 1 kg packet or you can say 2 kg packet 1 kg to 2 kg packet for tm percentage determination afterwards the rest of the coal again quartered and coned and subsequently it is being passed from another jaw crushers which we are getting after of it 3.35 mm
so there are two types of jaw crusher what we use one is 12.5 mm and one is 3.35 mm okay after 3.35 mm as we got we again quartered it to get to to 2.5 kg of sample ultimately we used to make 5 kg of sample of 3.35 mm and after further reduction we used to make 2.2 to 2.5 kg of sample and this sample is getting pulverized pulverized in the size of Two hundred twelve micron. Okay. Now this sample, this pulverized sample, is being used. for im percentage gcb adb this sample is being used so size and afterwards it is substituted in total moisture percentage to get gcv in arb format through that substitution process and substitute the mathematics what i have already shown it to you okay is this okay yes sir thank you sir only one person is making interaction with me others are remaining completely silent so how can i determine that everybody is getting audible to me everybody is uh, getting knowledge from this sessions everybody is understanding my conversation how do i know it onupam सर हर बार वही रिप्लाई नहीं कर रहे हैं बिजनेस हम भी कर रहे हैं अरे यार हम भी कभी तुम्हारे तरह कॉलेज का स्टूडेंट था जी ऐसा मत करो सर अभी ऑनलाइन में नॉइस हो रहा था तो इसलिए नहीं सर हम लेकिन म्यूट करके नहीं रखेंगे तो उसे दिक्कत हो जाएगा फिर आवाज आ जाएगा ज्यादा अच्छा 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 ऐसा बात अनवांटेड नॉइस क्रिएट होता है सर बहुत सारे लोग जब माइक ऑन रखते हैं तो यस इस में इसीलिए ना माइक ऑफ ही रखते हैं हर टाइम कि सुनाई दे अच्छे से और नेटवर्क का भी इशू रहता है बहुत माइक ऑन करने से यस सर ओके ओके एनी मोर क्वेश्चन excuse me excuse me students some senior fellow have just called me i will just take him take his call and after get him back within 2 to 3 minutes okay okay sir okay sir okay 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 sir
रिक्वायरमेंट आ रहा है बोर्ड मीटिंग से तो पूछ लीजिए एक बार एक बार पूछ लेते हैं इन लोगों से हेलो सर सर आपका आवाज सुनाई नहीं दे रहा सर नो सर क्वेरी है भाई मानसी सर गुड इवनिंग सर यस गुड इवनिंग बोलिए सर व्हाट इज द स्वेलिंग इंडेक्स ऑफ कोल एंड हाउ इट अफेक्ट्स द कंबशन स्वेलिंग इंडेक्स केकिंग इंडेक्स इज नॉट डिटरमाइंड and not getting controlled and monitored by quality peoples it is better to consult with lab related people lab oriented people i am not looking after that section so mr anupam please direct him to mr rahul pawa okay thank you so anything else sir heating value of coal sir yes sir there are like two heating values like higher heating values for heating values like that sir. so i don't get acha higher heating value and lower heating value of coal there are two type of heating values of coal is there gcb is usually what we termed in commercial purpose is the higher heating value and there is also a termed as net calorific value ncv it is termed as lower heating value of coal in case of gcb determination when moisture is being condensed and liberated heat is also taken into account in case of gcb okay in higher heating value and if we not consider that the latent heat of moisture condensation process during coal burning inside the bond calorimeter then it is termed as net calorific value ncv there is a formula between ncv and gcv right now i could not remind it but i will share it to you later okay there is a relationship between ncv and gcv basically ncv is was an old process of gcv determination heating value determination in nowadays everything everywhere gcv the higher heating value is being considered for all type of commercial transaction process okay thank you sir sir bomb calorimeter jo hai wo sir kaam kaise karta hai sir bomb calorimeter mein kaam kaise hota hai <laughs> rahul pawa sir. it is also related to laboratory oriented peoples okay so you will incorporate that uh, arrangement with mr rahul pawa okay rahul pawa subrat mandal whoever is available with you okay anything more yes, 
I think whatever the doubts they have, I have cleared. And personally, I have given 100% effort from my end to clear their doubts and queries. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So if anything more questions, they will arise in their minds. They can easily and frankly tell to you. Okay. And afterwards, you will convey it to me through my mail. I will get back to them accordingly. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, students. Thanks for Thank spending you, your sir. valuable time. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Nice talk to you. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, so hope you enjoyed the session now. Yes, okay, sir. sir. Om Sau raised. Acha, Om Sau, do you have any question? You raised your hand. Which type of problem? Is this uh, your technical related problem or admin related problem? Sir, we give uh, payment related problem. We will discuss later after the session okay so uh, do you have any query regarding your technical session no sir okay no sir okay so thank you sir thank you for sparing your valuable time with us thank you thank you so much